Let's talk to Keith in Michigan. Hi, Keith. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Stephanie. Uh, you need to hit me up next time you're in Grand Rapids area. Cool. I don't know when I'll be there, but I'll do what that. What area? Grand Rapids, <laughs> <Okay>. right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, I just wanted to touch base on what you guys were talking about earlier about, uh, well, I was calling in about the inanimate, inanimate object about kids turning them into weapons, but I'll touch subject on the um, when you guys were talking about people buying uh, products from uh, counterfeit companies as far as, as Gucci and all, and all those type of products. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to to, to press the stuff, press the um, the subject about people really wanting to think about what kinds of uh, companies they're actually funding when they buy those things. Um, I was listening to the radio earlier this week about uh, you know a lot of counterfeit people, a lot of counterfeit companies are actually funded by terrorism groups, and I'm sure not all of them are, but you really need to think about you know when, when you buy folk leaves or or coochie type uh, persons or or products, who are you really, you know, putting your money towards? Mm, I think you could ask the same. Providing just as good of a service. (laughs) Well, you could ask the same question about Oakley and Gucci. I mean, like Nike and Adidas often, they're like high name brands and they often get all kinds of crap for like their manufacturing practices, sweatshops. Nike was like the worst with sweatshops in the 90s. That was like, it spawned the whole book. I, I support sweatshops personally. You support sweatshops. Uh, okay, so I think, think sweats, sweatshop is a disparaging <laughs> term. Uh-huh. And uh, what a sweatshop is is a place where somebody goes to work, which is the best place that they can find to work at a time. And I personally and, do and not want to take away their opportunity to get to find the best job they can. What, Keith, go ahead. What, what were you saying? I was going to say, and by somebody you mean a seven-year-old kid. Is that what you mean? Well, um, I don't know if it's a seven-year-old kid, but I think that in some cases you're talking about adults. But okay, let's talk about seven-year-old kids. I had a job at 12. <laughs> I mean... Okay, but that was by your own choice. I don't think they're really being... When I you're in poorer countries, your choices are diminished. I don't think anybody should be um, you know, instituted in, in slavery. No, but... I'm with you, Keith. I mean, those conditions are very similar to they're deplorable. I mean, they're just not good. There's health risks and, you know, just work conditions that an American would never dream of undertaking. However, it's really hard to know where everything you buy comes from. Like you could really spend a lot of time and effort just looking into the practices of every single thing you buy. But do you understand how if you deplore sweatshops, you make third world countries like Bangladesh poorer, not richer. Like those people there aren't going to have, the reason well, they go to I work support, at sweatshops I is- I support micro lending, people but, spending but, their own, you know. Think, they, they can't, we won't have a job if they, to pay you back. I think we, I think we need to, I think we need to understand that making them poorer is okay if we're making the people more happy. If, if we're making the, the quality of life uh, less than, than what it is, if they're going to be working in sweatshops at seven years old, then I think they- deserve to be a little more happier living than being uh, sad working at seven years old doing shitty work. Well, you can't oh, say sorry, that word. Keith, um, we, we got to dump you. Um, thanks for the call. Okay, so yeah. um, I didn't like at seven years old going to school either. There's lots of things that we don't like. The conditions in foreign countries um, tend to stink, and you're not going to make them better by wishing that they would be better. Mm-hmm. So the best way to make them better, consider that seven-year-olds worked here in the United States in the past, and that's one of the reasons why we have a mature, developed economy on the world stage today is because, yep, Seven-year-olds worked. I'm not saying that I support or don't support seven-year-olds working. I think that, yeah, my son's six, and I try to get him to work. Now, under what conditions? I don't think that you an army of seven-year-olds is very good labor, frankly. And I don't know. I haven't seen any pictures of these seven-year-olds hard at work, but I assume if they are working, they're working for a reason, which is to have a better life for themselves. I don't know really what else yeah, to say. I, I feel like it's it sounds like a choice of the lesser two evils, um, and but that that's again as we always say on this show, you're still choosing like an evil. Uh, I think I mean because that's inferring that for a third world country to get to say a first world status. Um, and even assuming that first world status is somehow superior, because uh, I, I think what the caller was kind of saying was an interesting point because there is a difference between the standard of living and the quality of life. They are not equitable. They, they don't, uh, you know, they're not the same. One can be higher and the other can be significantly lower. Uh, the standard of living can be very high and your quality of life could suck. 
you know, mm-hmm. and and so if it takes if it takes a country to go through the industrial revolution and the working conditions of the industrial revolution uh, to get to a first world status, I think there's a problem with the system than there is with the fact that a country's poor. Uh, well, and, I would love to see this way. Yeah, I don't it, know it. That, that I'll Haiti admit it. I don't know it. can step in and go from Haiti to uh, Finland in the course of a year, but I haven't seen that happen. What well, I have seen happen in my lifetime was made in Japan meant junk when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And now it means the best computer, you know, the, yeah. the, yeah, it's the symbol of absolute quality. It's yeah. where intellectual property around computers comes out of like, it, you, nothing's even made in Japan anymore. It's made in China, which at the time was, um, you know, what it meant to me was starving kids live there. So in the course of my short, consider that the industrial well, revolution for- took a long time and that trail has been blazed. And now your country in the course of two decades can go from dirt poverty. If, if you have the right laws and the right, um, you know, uh, you know, ways that companies can come in, you can go, you can be, your people can be exploited into a better life in 20 years. Do you want that for yourself? Do you want that for them? Well, I think we need to remember that the reason that people are dirt poor is because of oppressive governments. And that may be the bigger fish to fry here. Yeah, like, absolutely. That why don't we focus on getting rid of the state and then it, economic growth will happen at a rapid pace. I love the idea, but the state isn't going away as a concept. It was the killingest thing in the 20th century. It's extraordinarily powerful as a concept, which is to say a, a large monopolistic top-down government um, hierarchy. Yeah, but if we're talking about it, uh, like are us talking about ending the state, is going to have as much influence as us talking about ending sweatshops, maybe more, you know. If you want to end sweatshops, you need to open up the borders. Because a lot of people that want to end sweatshops, what they want to do is they want to see labor in America, and they want to close up the borders so the people can't cross um, over here and have better life for (laughs) themselves. They don't want to pay $20 for a pair of underwear, though. (laughs) But you you do understand that if we open up the borders and we do away with things like uh, minimum wage laws, that you're going to have people here in this country come here to work for $2 an hour to make T-shirts cheaply or whatever they do. They might have air conditioning, but I mean, you know, people, the the, the, air, the T-shirt companies are going to go wherever they can produce well, T-shirts most te- quickly and then bring them to the United sl- States and sell them. Technology is a solution to this, too. Like if if we had robots making T-shirts in a it factory yeah. that's really hot instead of human beings, like, yeah, that's a no brainer. It's probably more profitable, too, because you don't have to, you know, like worry about the conditions for robots you can put them in a hot room cramped together Nah, you gotta you gotta have air conditioning for computers but um well, nonetheless but if it's profitable <laughs> it'll happen that's the thing employees and, are extraordinarily expensive even when they're cheap you know i mean that's right. the thing i yeah exactly and i don't think it's really a choice between sweatshops or like subsistence farming like there i are, think today it is well what about micro lending no. i mean that's a huge thing it is, but you've got to build your you know, the the people you're loaning money to to micro lend they uh, you know micro lending money to have to be able to pay it back. They have well, to have okay. Micro loans have the highest repayment rate of any type of loan, and actually, like they're they're getting loans for the purpose of building a business, and it usually works out well. So. Money needs to flow in. So if you live in Stephanieville, mm-hmm. and Stephanieville has. Three dollars and fifty cents, and there's four people, and this three fifty flows around between these four people. Your economy never grows. However, in Stephanieville, if I live in Stephanieville and I st- suddenly start taking in laundry from, uh, uh, you know, Brian uh, Berg, and <laughs> then I'm gr- bringing in a new uh, quarter every week, then suddenly our economy is expanding from three fifty to three seventy five. Give to us $4. a call. Come to Marktown, eight fifty five, four fifty free. This is free talk live. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 